Hello everyone, happy February. I hope you had a good Valentine's Day. And we're dealing with this again. Now for those who don't know, because I get asked this video, why do you make these videos? And it's for this point. The same reason I make my evolution videos that I do. Because I do not tolerate bullshit. I have very I have little tolerance in my life for bullshit. And you could have whatever opinion you like, whether you're Christian, Buddhist, Shintoist, Atheist, doesn't matter. As long as you don't lie and represent, misrepresent the truth. That is my sticking point. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, I believe this stuff. Well, then I don't see you any different than a creationist, to be honest with you. If you're gonna if you're gonna believe something that is factually and factually accurate, why should why should I listen to what you have to say? You've not backed up your case with anything like facts. There is no factual basis for any of the things he's gonna that goes engineer is gonna claim in this video. And I'm gonna get into points why. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the point of where the twenty fifth date comes from, <clears throat> and also why why his claims are erroneous. And we are going to go on a journey <clears throat> here, because again, I have no problem with people being atheists, I have no problem with people, people being Buddhists, I have no problem with whatever religion they want at so, or if they wouldn't have done, they have that right too. What they are not entitled to do is lie, or misrepresent the truth, or be mistaken, because you're entitled to your own opinion, you're not entitled to your own facts. And this is a factual point. This is not an atheist versus theist argument. This is a facts versus nonsense argument that can be shown to be nonsense. With that and a very heavy breath, here we go. a bunch of other cool shit. Well, I'm here to debunk that fucking shit right now. And in this first video, I'm gonna show you how exactly Jesus wasn't fucking born on December 25th. No, he wasn't. And we're gonna start off at a point of agreement. I absolutely agree. He wasn't born on December 25th. I know Christian thinks he was. We just celebrate his birth on the 25th. But not for the reasons you're going to point out in this video, or to this group, there's actually other reasons. However, Christian, not all Christians celebrate his birth on the 25th. Actually, there's many uh, Orthodox who celebrate his birth on a different day as well, on Christmas Day. But they still celebrate Christmas as, as a community thing for Christians. But they also they have a second holiday where they celebrate Christ's actual birth, which they believe to be around May and all, uh, April time. So again, not all Christians celebrate his birth, Christmas to be the actual birthday of Christ. Actually, most Christians recognise that the, the 25th is not his birthday. But again, we're going to get into the, the basis of your claims and why they're wrong, but we'll get there in a minute. Uh, yeah, he didn't exist in the first place, or at least he probably didn't exist to be more accurate. But now, I'm going to stop him there for this. He did exist. And the thing is, is that most scholars, secular or otherwise, have have uh, supported that claim. Now, again, you you are going to have to go to the the wacky parts of the internet to find people who don't believe that. People like I don't know Richard Carrier, and indeed Robert Price, and people like that. People who sh who let, let, let's be terrible and call them kooks. And there's a reason for that. Because if they actually put their work for, for actually public scrutiny, he would be tossed out for, for numerous reasons. Again, the thing is, is that there are numerous scholars who are, are atheists and Hindu and other religions that are not Christian who support the existence of, of a historical Jesus. Now, they may not believe in, in the person described in the Gospel, but again, that is for another time and for another discussion. But again, we're, we're going to get into the fact that He's going to get things wrong, and we're going to debunk those right now. If 
you didn't know that Jesus was born on December 25th or have heard of Jesus at all, you're one of the lucky people. Because God damn it, if people don't stop fucking talking about him this time of year. Jesus this, Jesus that. This year there's a public school that's doing a live nativity scene. A public school is doing a live nativity scene for a guy that probably didn't exist. And they're treating it like it's history. But did you also know that December 25th was a is actually the rebirth of Mithras? Do you know? No. Myth Mithra. You think of Mithra. Mithras is something different. But again, we're going to get to what in a few minutes. But Who the fuck that is, though? Mithras was first mentioned in the Rig Veda in India. The earliest reference of this uh, is in 1500 BCE. If you didn't know, that's way before Jesus. And this is Ruby Stack number one. Now, if if Godless Engineer wants to do some historical work, and this is not an argument for authority, Godless Engineer, this is actual fact. If he actually wants to do some work, he'll know that it didn't start in India, actually. The, the Mithras cult started in Greek, in Rome. And actually, people have, have debated about its its origins, but people thought it was originally taken from the... It was a melding of two cults between the Iranian and a a different one. But again, if you read David Alante's work on it, it goes into talking about how the uh, new discovery of the Zodiac and uh, the constellations had a big, big uh, impact on the, uh, on the cult of, of Mithras. And I'll leave that link down below, so you can read it. Now, now David Monty does not understand Christianity in the same way that Scott Zedjadis doesn't understand Christianity, that Christianity did not need other religions to exist, nor to have the 25th uh, as a date. But again, Scott Zedjadis doesn't know that, nor does he not know that. Again, a lot of the places uh, God said he didn't, really, didn't celebrate anything on the 25th. But we will continue. Mithras was born in Vedic Hinduism and had been a, an assistant to the high goddess uh, thing person uh, Varuna. Mithras was actually tasked with watching over Pax, which also has a strange correlation in the biblical dogma in Genesis. Eventually, Mithras took his foot and booted his master out of his own house. He pulled a Benedict Arnold, if you will. And, of course, Mithras rose to the important. Actually, I'd like to know where the clip, where that claim's coming from, because the only iconography I've ever seen is Mithras slashing the throat of a bull. Is there any iconography of this? Is there any show? Because again, the Roman myth religion of Mithras, where is he getting this stuff from? Where's where's this stuff in the India? Because so far, from David Alonti, who is one of the biggest Mithras scholars of the modern age, there is nothing about it coming from India. What you're thinking of is Iran and Persia. That's what you're thinking of, and that was wrong, and it was proved wrong when Francis Kumon was proven to be wrong about this, these claims long ago. But again, God the said it doesn't know this because again he doesn't read Robert Price or Francis Richard Carrier. So continue. Important place in this fucking culture. At the same time, this culture was moving from where it was to Persian Zoroastrianism. Basically, Mithras became the big motherfucker in charge. Threw a bunch of brand. Oh, thank you. Because again, I was just talked about Francis Kumon, and this is where it come from. I'd like to read you something from David Alonzi. <clears throat> let's let's read, shall we? <clears throat> for. for for most of the 20th century, it was assumed that Mith Mithraism was imported from Iran, and that Mith Mithraic iconography must, must therefore represent ideas drawn from the ancient Iranian mythology. The reason for this is that the, the god of the name Mithras is a Greek and Latin term of the ancient Iranian god Mithra. In addition, Roman authorities themselves expressed their belief in that the culture was Iranian in, or in origin. At the end of the 19th century, Franz Kumon, the great Belgian historian of ancient religion, published a two-volume work on the administrative mysteries based upon the assumption that the Iranian origins of the cult Kumon's would immediately become accepted as the defensive study of the cult, and made video and challenge for, for over 70 years. There was, however, a number of serious problems with Kumon's assumptions that the administrative 
quote, derived from the ancient Iranian religion. Most of it among these that there was no parallel in any area of the agro which which is in fact of the Roman material cult. For example, as I by the by the most important fact that the Roman cult itself was the tautology. So T A I O T O M Y. This shows that the this rest of the act of killing a bull accompanied by a dog, a raven, a snake, and a scorpion, the discovery is depicted as taking place in the cave, like Mithraeum itself. Yet the icon was located in the most important place in the Mithraeum, and therefore was the most important of the central myth of the Roman cult. Thus, if the god of Mithras of the Roman religion was actually the Iranian god Mithras, we should say to find in the Iranian mythology a story in which Mithras killed a bull. Uh, however, they know that there is no such Iranian myth in known in Iranian text. Does Mithras have anything to do with killing a bull? So that debunks everything you just said. And if you want to go further, it goes into what what it actually has to do with. But continue. And deals and, you know, corporations being bought out, chopped up, sold, and everything like that. Mithras eventually became the god of the Roman Empire. And basically it became tradition to celebrate Mithras' uh, rebirth with basically office keggers and shit. Of course, we all know that Mithras is a myth. Yeah, we know that because it, it's taken from the most recent discovery of the uh, Zodiac. Uh, that happened at the time uh, when Hippocarchus, and that's what influenced the 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 coming about of Mithras as a as a mystery religion. For you that that how facts back up what you have to say. See that that all the facts back up that I, I told Jesus actually existed. Otherwise, you'd be actually having a point here. There's no doubt about that. You're not going to see somebody out there arguing for Mithras as being some fucking real person that actually lived. We know that it was a myth that was completely made up by people. So you got to ask yourself, why do they celebrate his birth exactly? And why is his birth on December 25th if he never actually existed? How did they come to this date? Well, I got to tell you guys, it's entrenched in symbolism and their culture and their religions. It's every fucking where, man. Vermalia was the winter solstice of this uh, area. And Actually, it's to do with the most recent discovery of the Zodiac. Now, now, and what we would consider now to be cosmology. You know, the planets coming into it, the, 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 the 12 sides of the Zodiac, stuff like that. And the 25th being put as that particular day. It was a recent study. It was nothing historical about it. It's something that happened in the last two centuries of BC. It is not something that would have impacted an ancient religion like Judaism or any others. But continue, because you're going to make some claims now that they're wrong. And, of course, the solstice is the shortest day of the year. This has uh, symbolic references to Mithras as being a sun god. Uh, pulling from Robert Price's book, The Incredible Shrinking Son of Man... We have uh, Price saying this. This meant, in mythic symbolic terms, that the sun god had spent his force, grown old, and died, sunk beneath the sea on the horizon, and entered his tomb in the caves beneath the earth. And he would arise from there, reborn and rejuvenated, on the solstice. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, why Robert Price isn't taken seriously by scholars. Because, again, the, 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 the uh, origin of that claim doesn't come with Robert Price, nor does it come from history. It comes from much later, but we'll get into that in a minute. However, we, we should, we should that, the fact that, thank you David Alonzi for pointing out that, that this whole thing about the dying and rising thing is something that was, was put in many books which have been debunked. And it was debunked in the 19th century when, again, a person, I think it was Franz Kuhlmann and all these people, believed that there was this one myth that go, went around, the monomyth, that went round, and has such been debunked by, by scholars. But again, the thing is, is that the sun going down and sun coming up is wrong. And we know it's wrong for this. The 25th is, is something that happened recently, and a, and a lot, of these, lot of these religions you're going to put out didn't have the 25th, nor did they have the Julian calendar. Again, they they have specific days, and I'm not and I'm not going to get into all of them, because again, a lot of them have been debunked long before you and I existed. 
But here's the thing. Robert Price just said that that this was wrong, but as, as I just pointed out two minutes ago, Franz Kumont was wrong. We, as I said, and I pointed out why. If you want to give a reason why, why David Lanty is wrong, I'm all open. My ears are open. Robert M. Price, Incredible Shrinking Son of Man, location 595, Kindle Edition. Therefore, December 25th was simply a generic date that was taken that signifies the rising of the newly born sun god. Now, if you want to think that Mithras was a lonely motherfucker and he was, uh, you know, just, uh, he was out there doing his own thing... No, you would be wrong. There are uh, other gods in this area that actually hold to the whole December 25th being either a birth or a rebirth. And, uh, you know, some of those gods would include Dionysus. Dionysus neither was born nor died on, the, on December 25th, nor was he resurrected. He became a god. The god of wine, in fact. Adonis. And Adonis neither died nor neither reborn on December 25th. He became a god as well. The god of beauty. And Horus. They all had December 25th. Uh, no, he wasn't born on December 25th. And the origin of that claim came with somebody who could not speak nor translate hieroglyphs. There is no modern translation that supports such a day. And actually, they wouldn't have celebrated the, the sol solstice on the 25th anyway, because that would have been fought, fought on the Julian calendar. And in fact, actually, if you do the leap, or, leap, leap, um, leap year following using the Julian calendar, you know that it falls on every other day apart from the 25th. So, you know, facts for you. Of course, all of these gods uh, range from different areas, including Egypt, Persia, Phoenicia, and Germany. And they had uh, their own respective gods in these countries that represented seasonal changes. The setting of the sun and the rising of the new year. Now, the basis of this claim, because I know Godless Engineer hasn't read anything about this, Starts in the 19th century. It does not start in when these religions were about. It does not start when any of this stuff. It starts in the 19th century when English people were into spiritualism. And I'm not talking about spiritualism not now. I'm talking about spiritualism as in think that it could incant ghosts or, and all sorts of bizarre stuff like that. But a person named Mother Travosky, and yes, the same, this is the same about Travosky, by the way, who's a big support, a big source for that, that fantastic show, Spirit Science, uh, came up with the claim that there was a one-world religion where they all used the sun to come down, and uh, it happened on Atlantis. There's the basis of this claim. You're believing in somebody who believed that Atlantis not only existed, but was the basis of all world religion. That is where this claim origins. It does not origin within these countries or whatever. That is, all, is untrue, I'm afraid. It's celebrated across the old world in an amalgam of different ways, with an amalgam of different gods. To quote Price again right here, pre-Christian Egyptians and Syrians would symbolize the sun as an infant and hold him up before his adoring worshippers with the words, Behold, the Virgin has brought forth... Another reason why Robert Price is so taken seriously by scholars, because anybody who can speak Holocaust knows there is no such translation, because neither Isis nor any other gods in Syrian, Syrian culture, and I won't be provided with any, have been translated as virgin. And again, virgin just means maiden in that term. The reason virgin has become there is unknown by man. Now, where in any of those religions has it said that there was no sexual intercourse? Because both in Isis's case and in, in any cases of the Virgin, there is a sexual congress. Because again, they're transferring the, the essence of Horus, which is the godly spirit, onto the next person. It's basically the Pharaoh is becoming the living embodiment of Horus on Earth. This shows that Robert Price doesn't know anything about Egyptology. Robert M. Price, Incredible Shrinking Son of Man, location 599.
Now, you may be asking yourself, like, what the fuck does this have to do with Jesus? I mean, yeah, there's there's uh, all these different gods that have these same birthdays, but, you know, just because we hold to Jesus being born on December 25th, that doesn't mean that he copied from them. Well, not at first, of course. I mean, at first, they didn't really know when he was born. I mean, it's not like he was born, and then some years later, Christmas was, was a thing, and, you know, Santa Claus would come down the chimney of all the little grass huts and he would give all the little kids presents and whatnot. I mean, the, the whole Santa myth was uh, developed over several years, if not tens or, or maybe even hundreds of years. Actually, the Santa myth begins with St. Nicholas, who was a, I think he was a Catholic a Catholic uh, priest who gave gifts out at the time, and that's where the, the center of the Santa myth But continue. Here. It's not like this happened overnight, <laughs> like a lot of people make it out to be. There are actually several characters in the biblical dogma that have sun symbolism uh, ingrained in their own character. Now, some of these characters, we don't know whether or not they were real or if they were just uh, merely mythical. We don't have evidence to suggest one way or another. So what we have to go off of is what is actually in the text and how it's connected to this sun symbolism. You guys know about Samson in the book of uh, Judges? He was a bad motherfucker, wasn't he? I mean, he's basically like the Black Hulk is what he was. Or at least that's how he's depicted in most of these religious videos and whatnot. Whether or not you want to believe he was black, white, uh, purple... It doesn't matter. He was a bad motherfucker. But did you know that his name quite literally means the sun? Actually, no, it does actually quite literally mean the sun. In Judaism, it means man of the sun. Important. But continue. And, of course, he's just a, basically a carbon copy of Shamash from Babylon with a little bit of Hebrew thrown on it. The idea that he's this blazing sun, uh, you know, even though the author tried to cover up these references, it is totally rampant throughout his entire story. For example, like, he does a whole lot of shit with fire, which is also shit associated with the sun. <laughs> he burns a Philistine grain harvest. His hair is separated out into seven locks, and... He also fights a fucking lion. Well, there's a son ever fought a fucking lion. Y yeah, he burns. He burns something. So the the, the son is hot. What's the connection? You told you show me so the son fighting a fucking lion. That is badass. That actually would be badass. But like you know, uh, he did other things. Like for example, uh, that he was one of God's chosen people. That he was. He killed certain people and stuff like that. You know, he was he was a bad motherfucker. I know, but again, he died. The sun doesn't die. I don't know, and he stays dead. So when does the sun ever died out? Because surely I I'm feeling very cold now because that sun's burning out. So it doesn't make sense. We think it through, does it really? Again, you're already thinking about the place where he sets things on fire and makes it hot. It doesn't the way he kills a flaming lion. I mean, I know what you're thinking. Awesome dreads, right? Well, I'm wrong. I mean, this would symbolize the, the rays that are generally depicted coming out of the sun. And, I mean, the reason why we, we know that that's what the rays uh, mean, like the, the rays, uh, are, you know, are the sunlight, basically, right? Well, when they get cut off, he's, of course, blinded and weak. His hair is the source of his power, if you will. And so when he loses his hair, it's like the sun's setting. You know, everything goes black, and it's it's more vulnerable. Everything's... everything's of course, Godless Engineer is, is missing out other parts where Samson does other things. Like, for example, when he travels to, to a Hallett's house, when he... Takes refuge in a cave, which I don't imagine the sun's doing. Like when he go, when he goes up to the army of Philistines, when he, which would, which were historical people at the time, when he did other things, like when uh, he denied certain things to him, and you know the things he said. But again, we don't want to get into those. Do we?
is more vulnerable. You're more vulnerable. And so you're weaker. Elijah didn't do any better with this whole symbolism thing. Elijah, that motherfucker, he called down fire from the sky. Or, you know, basically Alabama in December. He was more badass than Samson. Do you know how Elijah actually ascends into heaven? Which, by the way, he's one of the only ones in the Bible that does that. But how he actually ascends into heaven is in a fiery chariot. <laughs> Basically, he rides the sun into heaven. <laughs> Psst, that's just like Apollo. Enoch likes to pimp walk around. Again, the thing is, is that if... If God was engineer was actually looking for parallels, he'd actually go to a uh, logical place, which would be uh, the text itself and not go outside of it. Because, again, this is a very Jewish thing to do. Because the idea of fire consuming... Because, again, what God was engineer doesn't understand is that Adonis or something has no bearing on this. The, the idea of fire being a cleansing agent is something that goes throughout all of history uh, at that time because there are two cleansing agents water and fire so if you're going to use one as a cleansing agent or something cleansing the soul or rescuing somebody you're going to use one of the two metaphors it has nothing to do with the sun but has anything to do with fire and water being cleansing agents of the ancient world with god around the circle in the sky by the way circle is a two-dimensional object uh, object. When you see that in the Bible, they're talking about a two-dimensional object. The, the the Bible talks about a flat earth. No, it does not refer to a black earth because, again, people have, have often argued whether the, the Bible actually argues for a flat earth or not. And most people say it doesn't. But again, you don't care about the facts because, again, you'd rather stick with the definition that it's flat because then all people must believe it. Who are Christians or Jews must believe it's flat, which again is something that they didn't believe because they, again they were sailors and would ha I know things like, for example, tides, which would not happen on a flat earth. If you're not, if you're not getting my drift here. And whose lifespan is suspiciously 365 years. Eshua is a red hairy motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, this is supposed to really symbolize like the sunset, you know, that beautiful red that you get right then. And then this guy also, he wields sunstroked arrows that he hunts with. <laughs> or oh, it could be just, just using the fact that they were called yellow. Mind blown. <laughs> By the way, that's exactly like Apollo 2! Moses, that motherfucker has a lot of sun symbolism shoved up his ass. I mean, this motherfucker doesn't just leave the tent he doesn't just pimp walk out of the tent this guy just embarks out of the tent and he just glows and then you know what he does he goes up onto a mountain and then it gets lost from god and he disseminates them to the weaker people that's just like him a rabbi his god did it to him too really or was this used by a cook from the 19th century who didn't know what a rabbi was Maybe this is a whole Jewish thing, like that God appears in things to 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 make His will onto the earth. The burning bush, in like people in the rocks in the mountains and stuff like that, to to show His chosen people the way. It does not need other religions to do it. God. And of course, we get to Jesus. He's got a lot of sun symbolism wrapped up around him. I mean, he shines like the sun's strength, right? And then he's got these 12 brosephs that are around him, which symbolize the zodiac. See that the zodiac wouldn't be properly tried out for another five, uh, another 200 years after after Jesus existed. That'd be a hell of a trick. Is, it, is Jesus a time traveler now? By the way, you can look at this up when, if you look at Hippocratus' Hi thing. So, I mean, honestly, it's no wonder that we came to the conclusion that he was born on December 25th. Everything seems to line up with this sun worship, right? With this idea that the season changes. Not only that, but the fact that there are pre-existing religions that use these seasonal changes. You from there isn't, and there, there hasn't been. These, these claims come from people who didn't understand these religions, nor did they... Because they translate the original works into English. We know this now because, again, nobody backs up what 
uh, Gerard Massey says. No one brings, brings what Godfrey Hagen says. No one brings what Madame Travasky says. No one backs up what Franz Cumont says. No one backs up any of these claims which you're basing your, your claims upon, which again, this, it's the basis that Rich, Rich, uh, Robert M. Price and Richard Kerry base their claims upon, which have again since been debunked. And the run. Use the sun as a way to celebrate these seasonal changes, and they have worked them into their own god myths that we know that this had a part in, in the construction of this, this Christ figure. But you do know that the, the 25th wasn't always celebrated as Christ's birthday, right? That it was a political decision and a political machination. And it's not for the reasons you point out, and I said I would get to this. It was actually chosen as a date because it, it, I think it was the uh, Nigerian... I think Nigerian American emperor at the time. I think his name was something like Abagara or something like that. His birthday was on the 25th, and because there were Christians who would celebrate on the 25th, I'm not going to say they weren't, thought that was a better day than ever. But however, not all Christians today celebrate his actual birthday on the 25th. A lot celebrate on, on different days. So so how come you're not talking about them? People like the Orthodox, for example, celebrate two Christmases, which was, is the one that we celebrate on the 25th, and another one which is on the 25th, which is called his real birthday. But again, we don't care about that still, do we? This is Jesus. So no, for you, for those of you out there thinking, no, Jesus was not born on December 25th. And if he was actually a real person and he was actually born, there's no way that we can tell when the fuck he was born, okay? Most people say about springtime, uh, I think the Orthodox celebrate about, I think it's about April, mid, I think it's like third week of April, I think. It's like the third Friday of April they celebrate their second Christmas, so that's when they've approximated the day most Christians think it's about that day as well considering what descriptions the Bible gives about the, the what's going on at the time uh, in, in the four gospel text. So again, that's what most Christians say. Again, most Christians know he wasn't actually born on December 28th. Okay. Um, because there's the, the there's there's quite quite literally no way. I mean, there's no real dates in the Bible for when it existed. It's not like it's not like the the wise men, you know, rolled up in snowmobiles because it was snowing the out there, and and they were. There's bulls in the field was indicate it's either summer or springtime. There was the fact that the trees were blooming, which indicates it's around that time as well. There's, there's other factors which people have factored in. So again, there are there are big clues, but again, we don't know the exact date. But people have. Of the fact because people were traveling around, and it might have been a special day because of of other thing of other approximation. Again, if it was near a a Jewish holiday, we'd have a closer idea of what it was exactly. They were iced in because, of course, fucking snow. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on this. Did Jesus exist? I hope that you will go down below and uh, subscribe if you like this series. Also, don't forget to like this motherfucker, and I'll see you guys next time. And that's the end of that. Now, I'm going to ask people who are, who maybe agree with him on the on this to to think about this. Okay, factually, he's incorrect because again, we know that the things are, that he said are wrong because again, we never have hieroglyphs that back up his claims or anything else. Now, the thing is, is that he does a very cut and shut job to try and fit in well it's all to do with the sun it's very picturesque it's very like taking points for the bible he doesn't take from other points where that could sort of uh allocation does it things now um why does he not talk talk about paul where talk, paul talks about his disciples and being human beings and being human beings he's interacted with on you know that's just like one thing, you know. Paul has actually talked to a couple, to, so how can it be some some rays or parts of, of the twelve sides of the zodiac if they actually, you know, exist as human beings? Now, as I said, I'll either link to David Lancey stuff. Going, but as I said, he gets some things wrong about Christianity as well because he, he doesn't understand Christianity either. But he, he does point it out there that the, the Mithras cult exactly as it is. And I read you some of the things before. And you can get into where this originally came from and stuff like that. And it has nothing to do with Persia, nor does it have to do with India. However, 
I'd like people who are atheists to think about this. If Christianity is wrong, let's say, for example, Christianity is wrong, then you shouldn't need bullshit to, to contact that, combat it, now should you? This is bullshit. Thanks for the watching.